Hey everyone, Chris G here. So I had somebody complain in the comments section that in our Dell video about how you can improve the thermals and the fan noise, that we didn't actually go into detail or show how you can replace the thermal paste on the Dell laptop. Now, every laptop, including those from Dell, have like a different teardown procedure, so that's why we didn't actually do one in the video itself, but I'm like, I bet. So here we go. Here is how you replace the thermal paste on a laptop. All right, now for expeditiousness purposes, we just, we already took the screws out on the bottom cover here. This is, by the way, just a little 13 inch Dell Inspiron laptop. So again, all laptops are gonna have a different teardown experience, but a lot of modern ones have usually just a bottom, bottom cover that can kind of pop off and reveal at least most of the guts. There are some Hewlett Packards and some Lenovo's where the CPU is on the other side of the motherboard, so you'd have to take out the whole motherboard to get to it. Uh, but that said, on this particular Dell model, CPU is right here. So ultimately, what you want to do is find where your CPU is on your Dell laptop. Generally speaking, there will be a fan connected to it, and then, of course, the heatsink. So what you do is you start by removing the screws on the heatsink. You'll also need to remove the CPU fan as well. All right, so the screws are out. We're going to... Remove the CPU fan. Obviously you wanna be very careful. It's attached and this is pretty much universal on most laptops and motherboards. You just remove the little two pin connector here. You should probably use a tool, like a little like pry tool or something like that just to get into the little grooves of the plastic. But I've been doing this for so long, I'm lazy and I'm not going to. Uh, next you've got, of course, the heat sink that's now free because we removed the four screws on that. So. When you turn your heatsink upside down, you will notice all of this gray gunk just all, you know, just on it. So first and foremost, you need to start by removing the gray gunk. You want to do that by using denatured alcohol. By the way, it is at this point that I would probably recommend using some, some latex gloves, uh, just because that thermal paste is kind of nasty stuff. And of course, denatured alcohol will dry the shit out of your hands, especially if you're you know, looking to moisturize or whatever, or keep your hands in a good shape. But anyway, latex gloves on. So we're gonna take a, just a paper towel. Doesn't really need to be too much more than that. You can also use lint-free cloths, of course, but basically we're just gonna soak the paper towel in this stuff. And then we'll start by doing the copper heat sink. So just sort of rub on there. You can see it's kind of coming off. It's on the paper towel. Just kind of keep working at this. Now, ultimately you can use other solvents, but I have found that denatured alcohol is the most effective. All right, that's clean enough. And there was some lint on this paper towel. So ultimately you may want to use something lint free, but you get the idea for the demonstrational purposes of this video. Next, we of course want to clean that guy off. So same deal. Soak our paper towel in denatured alcohol. And then you very carefully make sure that you get the CPU. Now you can, because you're using denatured alcohol, you can basically get the entire CPU wet, so to speak. But ultimately the, the goal is to just get this dye right here to get that, to get the little chip um, uh, cleaned off. This gunk that kind of collects on the edges of the CPU Ultimately, that is, I mean, you're gonna see that on most processors because it kind of leaks off as you're reapplying the heatsink. It's not a big deal to leave that stuff on, but if you can get it off, you know, you might as well just, you know, again, it's just kind of caked up gunk. So let's get rid of this stuff here. All right, so that is good for now. Try to get as much of that stuff off up uh, as you can, but again, not the end of the world if you don't get all of it. Uh, that's not really the part that's affected. Next up, you take your thermal paste. I like to use TM30 by Corsair. Arctic Silver 5 is also good stuff. Really, all of it is good. So you just take this, okay? Here, and I'm gonna try to punch in here in the video a little bit. There we go. So you just apply a very thin bit of it here. And try to get it on that whole that whole chip there. 
you don't want to put too much because that will too too much is a bad thing so you kind of want to find that sweet spot where it just sort of applies thinly and actually I hate to say it I think I put too much on here but again we're just demonstrating here ultimately that is probably a little bit too much um, so we're just going to kind of wipe it in there with the, the glove a little bit and then of course as you put the heat sink on it will smush some of it down too so there you go I did that very sloppily but so I will probably get people in the comment section saying, oh, you, you got it on the CPU or you put too much on. Honestly, none of that's a big deal. I promise you it's not a big deal. But be a little bit more careful or cognizant when doing it. Anyway, put the heatsink back on. Put the four screws. Put your CPU fan. You know, first clip it back into the uh, correct little port there. So you got to make sure the fan obviously gets power. Then you put the screws in on your CPU. And that's it. Now, ultimately this will work for both laptops and desktops, but that is basically the meat of it. You take off your CPU fan, use some denatured alcohol to get all the old crap off, apply a thin but generous layer, a whisper if you will, of, of a thermal paste on the CPU. Make sure to be a little bit cognizant about getting it on the edges of the motherboard and the other stuff. But you know, again, if you do it, really not a big deal. Um, manufacturers do it all the time. And uh, in any event, um, then you reapply your heatsink, your uh, fan or uh, liquid cooler if you've got one of those, and then you are good to go. Uh, power on your computer and be impressed by how much cooler it runs. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, reach out to us in the comments section and we will be back with another video really soon.